Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Say, the Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Ministers, Honourable Members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, say, I'm honoured to address this August House on the recent Youth Climate Action Summit held in Suwon 16 to 18, March 2021. Mr. Speaker, say, the summit may be for the first time, but the empowerment training on climate change have been an ongoing program for my ministry. Mr. Speaker, say, we were also very glad by your presence amongst the youth as well, and I thank you. Mr. Speaker, say, I wish to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for opening the first ever National Youth Climate Action Summit. Mr. Speaker said, I also wish to highlight the opening statement of the Honorable Prime Minister, and I quote, I have been to a lot of climate change conference over the past few years, but let me tell you something. There is something refreshing about this one. I think it boils down to a simple fact. You, my friends, are genuine, unquote. In fact, Mr. Speaker said, the Honorable Prime Minister's full speech <coughs> paved the way towards a successful summit. Mr. Speaker, say I commend the Honorable Prime Minister's leadership and thank him for his wisdom and the government's overall effort towards climate change issues. Mr. Speaker, say the intention to host such a summit emanated from my Talanwa sessions with the young people during my visitations to their respective communities. I have witnessed the first hand, the impact of climate change on their communities and how this translates to further socio-economic challenges. Mr. Speaker said, Fiji has a young population. Youths between the ages of 15 to 35, and as we all should know by now, makes over a third of the nation's population. The median age of Fiji's population is 27.5 years, and 70% of Fiji's population are below the age of 40 years. Mr. Speaker said, youths play a vital role in the decision-making process, and their potential as key agents of social change, innovation, and future leadership places them at the heart of building up resilience to climate impacts. <laughs> Mr. Speaker said, climate science clearly tells us that less than 10 years are left for the world to make a sustainable, inclusive, resilient, and low carbon transition to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Therefore, Mr. Speaker said, it is important to have our young people participate as agents of change as they can influence the fellow youths to join the fight against climate change. Mr. Speaker said, given this context of my ministry, <coughs> convene 200 young Fijians to deliberate on climate change issues affecting their daily lives and the nation as a whole. Mr. Speaker said, key agenda for the three-day National Youth Climate Action Summit was to create awareness on Fiji's climate agenda through national plans and policies, as well as to generate active dialogue among the youths about climate change and how it impacts their lives and communities. Such discussions, Mr. Speaker said, tied up with the important sections of the draft climate change bill, 
and how the draft bill could serve their collective needs. Mr. Speaker said, the National Youth Climate Action Summit turned out to be an excellent enabler for youths to discuss matters relating to climate change. I personally witnessed the innovative and exciting way our youths approach this global issue. While voices of all youths need to be heard, many a times we see the discussion spaces on climate change and broader national development are dominated by urban youths. It is rather unfortunate that sometimes, Mr. Speaker said, finance and time do not allow rural youths to participate in dialogue regarding matters of national interest. In this regard, Mr. Speaker said, the decision by my ministry to ensure the participation of rural youths to be in the summit to discuss climate change and the draft climate change bill was greatly welcomed by the climate change division within the Ministry of Economy and other UN agencies involved. The summit, Mr. Speaker said, was able to help youths better understand the effects of climate change. The youths in their responses made it clear of a better understanding of climate change. And I'm happy to learn that they clearly stated that the first ever national summit has given them encouragement to become climate warriors. It was also inspiring to have youth from the disabled community, Mr. Speaker said, to participate in the event with dedicated translators throughout the entire three-day event. Mr. Speaker said the highlight of the summit was lively, and innovative on day three between youths on how the draft climate change bill can be improved and factors that it must consider to ensure that it is inclusive and truly representative of youth priorities. With 200 youths participating throughout the summit, Mr. Speaker said, the draft climate change bill, national consultation have kicked off to an excellent start. Mr. Speaker said, the summit also gave consideration to the healthy environment for healthy children global program framework 2021 by UNICEF, as the Committee on the Rights of the Child has identified climate change as one of the biggest threats to the children's health and is using states to place it to the center of climate change adaptation and mitigation policies. Mr. Speaker said, these discussion sessions not only provided youths an opportunity to voice their concerns on priorities relating to climate change, but provided a guideline to creating their own action plans outlining climate justice for their communities. It allowed meaningful engagement and contribution from the youth sector as they developed the self-sustainable action plan to implement in their respective communities. Mr. Speaker said the summit culminated in the development of an outcome statement by youths, and I wish to highlight the preamble, our future, and I quote, children and youth are not just leaders of tomorrow. They are the partners of today. They stand for action and change. They stand for solutions. The document recognizes that climate change is a human rights crisis threatening our lives, our families, our future, and propose the fact that youths want our future generation to live in a safe, clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. In this outcome document, Mr. Speaker said, the 200 youth delegates of the National Youth Climate Action Summit 2021 representing the voices of young people, acknowledge and thanks the government of Fiji for its strong leadership in implementing a whole of government approach, taking climate actions at all levels. Mr. Speaker said it recognizes positive steps taken at the national level, including the development of the climate change bill, which sets the policy direction for us as a nation recognizing the rights of children and youth 
set out in the Constitution and aligned to global commitment and standards. End of quote. Mr. Speaker said, furthermore, the youth participants recommended to establish a national youth climate change advisory group to amplify the voices of young people, which will contribute to the governance and oversight of climate change related issues in the National Climate Change Coordination Committee. To strengthen mechanisms, frameworks, and financial support for the inclusion and active participation of Fijian youths, irrespective of gender and abilities within all policy making and planning processes at national, regional, and international level, including participation of young people in the official government delegation. Mr. Speaker said, the youth participants pledge that we, the youth, commits to make concrete action to contribute to the climate change mitigation and adaptation at grassroots level. When we return to our communities, we commit to implement our climate action plan and involve other young people in our communities. Today, we, the Fijian youth, take a firm stand in committing ourselves to take climate action and do all that is within our capacity to collaborate with our government and relevant stakeholders to support the implementation of the Climate Action Plan and Climate Change Bill 2020. Mr. Speaker said, the outcome document supports my ministry's approach in climate change program such as Youth Coast Care Club, Waste Care and Management, and our new Certificate 1 in Resilience Program, which covers the disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation that will be implemented in all our youth training centers in the new financial year. Mr. Speaker said, climate change affects all stages of life in different ways, and it is every country's duty to formulate ways to protect its people against these issues. Mr. Speaker said, the National Climate Action Summit was made possible through the generous assistance and support of partners and stakeholders. At this juncture, Mr. Speaker said, my sincere gratitude to the Climate Change and International Cooperation Division of the Ministry for Economy and UNICEF Pacific as our major partners and other UN agencies and relevant line ministries for their support. Mr. Speaker, say, I also wish to thank my technical working group for all their effort in putting up this event to recognize the voices of our youths. Their contributions have made the event a successful one as well. To conclude, Mr. Speaker, say, my ministry will continue to carry out its roles and functions for the youths across the nation and continue to strive to meet the unique challenges of our youth with the resources for the 21st century in Fiji. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this time. I thank the Honorable Minister for his ministerial statement.